What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you saw my last video, my 2009 BMW 335i, then you know that I was diagnosing it using ISTA. That is a dealership software program to diagnose BMWs. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. Anyway, I came to the conclusion that probably what was throwing my check engine light and giving me code 2C31 was the upstream O2 sensor on the front bank. So cylinder is one through three, first O2 sensor. So I went ahead and I ordered one from uh, FCP Euro, Bosch OEM uh, or OE, whatever. And uh, so today I'm gonna go ahead and change it. So it's the top one on the front side, like I said, and uh, without taking out the down pipe. So it's gonna be a tight fit. Uh, basically, I've got a crow's foot 22 millimeter on here. Hopefully that's enough to break it loose. I saw a video where somebody did it with a stubby 22 and uh, I don't have a stubby. I couldn't find one at the store. So hopefully this will do the trick. All I really need to do is break it loose because they're not in there very tight. So once I break it loose, it should just be able to finger thread it all the way out. So first thing I want to do here is disconnect the front O2 sensor because when we're twisting it out, we don't want the wire twisting around itself. So let's go ahead and unplug that. So the front O2 is the black wire, so you just have to kind of get it out of this plastic clip. I think it just sort of slides out and then we can uh, push down on the, somewhere on here there's something you push on. There we go, just, just like that, and we can work this around and out. Okay, so I got it unplugged. Getting it unplugged was easy. Um, I mean, obviously, you just unplug it. But So, and if you can see back there, uh, it's really hard to tell but now, but uh, it is wired, like the wire was under the oil catch can. Um, my mechanic said he had taken off my oil catch can at some point, and I guess when he put it all back together, I mean, it was just buried under everything, and it was so hard to get that out of there. But, um... It's, uh, it is, is out now, so uh, now so you can see when we spin it, the wire is not attached to anything, so it'll just come, it'll just be easy to spin out. So the next step is to uh, get this car up in the air. All right, so you really only need to get the front of the car up. I just have some bricks behind those back wheels. Uh, so the next thing to do is underneath the car, I'm going to have to remove this plastic body panel. It's held in by a bunch of eight millimeters all over the place. And uh, so yeah, that's the next step. Okay, so now I have the panel off and I am under the car and my feet are facing towards the back. So my feet are closer to the differential and my head is closer to the front bumper. And so this is the steering rack right here. This is that cylinder looking thing. And you know, it goes onto there. So between that and the subframe, I think you can see right there, that's the O2 sensor that I need to get. And I think this is gonna be pretty easy to do actually. This, this is, um, looks like it's gonna be easier than I thought. So I'm just going to have to break that loose and then uh, I should be able to finger thread it on out, get it out, feed myself the new one down from the top, and uh, then screw it on in, make sure it's tight, and plug it back together. And uh, I think this should be pretty easy actually. So um, there's no way I'm going to be able to hold the camera and break that loose. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so I was able to break it loose and it's finger threaded. So there's no, there's really no room here at all. but coming loose you can probably hear that and you just got to kind of keep pulling the wire through to make sure it's not tangling around itself and just kind of work its way on out and get that have to feed that wire through better but uh, it's coming loose you can see right there well you can't see but let me get I'll get it out in a second I have no idea how I'm gonna get the other one back in there because that was not easy but I'm sure if I can get this out, I can get the other one in, so it's the next step. Okay, so inevitably when you start pulling on the wire, it's probably going to get caught on something. So at that point, you just kind of have to keep working on it, and it's caught again. I've gone up there, and I've loosened it, and it's caught again on something. So it's just going to get keep getting caught until you get it all the way out. So that's what I'd recommend, trying to get it out before you start messing with it too much. All right, so this is my uh, O2 sensor. This is what it looked like. So uh, imagine that uh, it, it looks pretty bad. So I'd imagine that this is my problem. I certainly hope it is because I don't want to have, it's not easy. I mean, the rear one looks like it would be even easier, 
But I just spent a hundred bucks on this, so I really hope this solves my problem. But judging by the look of this crazy thing, I mean, this thing is scored really badly. I'm sure it's giving bad readings. So uh, even if this isn't entirely the problem, I'm sure it's part of it. So uh, yeah, it's basically the reverse to get it in. So I'm gonna try to feed the O2 sensor down from the top and um, you know, and then uh, thread it in and then connect it. And hopefully it'll be easier than getting it out, but not keeping my, not holding my breath on that one. All right, and just for comparison, this is the new one, and like they've they've already greased it up and everything like that, so that's that's really nice. Just looks so much better. It's no no scoring, no carbon, none of that stuff all over it. I'm gonna put the cap back on. It's right there. That way I can feed it down without worrying about damaging it because they are pretty fragile. Okay, so as you can see right here, here is the O2 sensor, the new one. It's still in its protective thing. There is the hole to put the new one in put it in so we'll have to take the cap off thread that in and then tighten it down so just finger thread it and then kind of go about uh, maybe half a turn I'm not sure just until it's tight but it's not supposed to be like really tight at all it's just supposed to be in there and snug so um, yeah all right guys so I was able to finger thread it that's right now you can see that sensor is much more shiny and new than the one behind it uh, I was able to finger thread it that far so now I'm gonna get my crow's foot attachment and just try to uh, turn it down until it's you know nice and snug. Like I said before, this doesn't need to be really tight, but you know it's just sort of tight as right, but not too tight. Um, yeah, so now I'm, uh, hopefully this crow's foot attachment will be all I need to just get that done. All right, so I had to drop the steering rack, unbolt it. Uh, it's a non-alignment part, so it's not a big deal. We'll just bolt it back up to free up some more space because I, I couldn't get it. I could not get it more than finger tight without doing this so uh, to do this you have this spot here and this spot here they, where the steering rack connects to the subframe it's an E14 on the bottom and supposedly it's a 15 mil on the top but uh, I couldn't get a 15 to fit so I just used an adjustable wrench and uh, undid it that way so hopefully now I can get enough space up in this little this little gap here and uh, get that thing down tight so as you can see, I got it in. Um, it is tight now. Uh, I had to use a combination of the crow's foot on this uh, ratchet. This is not really a ratchet. I don't know what you call it, but it's uh, it doesn't pivot. My problem was that it kept pivoting every time I got it up close to it, and I couldn't get it on before it would start pivoting. So I'd have to use this, turn it until I didn't have any more clearance to turn. Then I would have to get an eight-inch adjustable wrench and turn it. A little bit so that I could get back on it using the crow's foot and then I would do that again and it was really frustrating but I got it now it's in so uh, next thing is to uh, I gotta put the steering rack back on and then uh, hook the wire in and everything and then that should be it and we'll find out if this took care of my check engine light all right so I have the car running uh, it kind of ran rough for like two seconds when I started it and then it was good. Uh, as you can, well, I don't know. I can see that there's no exhaust leaking out of here uh, in any obvious manner. If I stick my hand up there, you can tell that there is no. Ex can tell that there is no exhaust uh, like leaking out anyway. Um, so I think it's all good to go. Uh, check engine light is still on, but I haven't reset the. Um, uh, reset the ad adaptations or driven it at all. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't leaking or anything before I put this uh, uh, belly pan back on. So yeah, right now I'm going to put that on. Same thing as taking it off. It's just a ton of 8 millimeters, And uh, then we'll lower the car down and take it for a spin. But uh, yeah, this is exactly how to change the O2 sensor. It's probably the easiest way without removing the downpipes. I mean, there's just really not a lot of space to work with, but uh, it can be done. And it looks like the second uh, O2 sensor could be done pretty easily, but I hope it doesn't go bad because it looks like it really is a lot easier if you take the first O2 out first. So hopefully you don't have to do that anytime soon. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. All right, so I took the car for a drive, and probably about 30 miles in, the check engine light is back on, so... Uh, I'm pretty sure that this was either, if it was part of the problem, it didn't solve the problem because light's back on. So I'm going to run the code again, make sure that it's still just that 2C31. If it is, then I guess I'll try the rear sensor next. If that still doesn't solve it, then I know there's 
a leak somewhere that I was unable to detect myself so I'll have to take it to an exhaust shop and get them to figure out where this leak is coming from 